Hello, welcome to the video. It's Tuesday the 4th of April and it's my first full mowing week of the season. And it's a short week though because it's Easter. Uh, well, it's Good Friday on on Friday, funnily enough. Yeah, let's get started. Oh no. do as it's the first week of full-time mowing is show you my my mowing lawn care setup for the season just show you around the van the sort of stuff that I carry with me on a daily basis and then show you the mowers that I will most likely be using uh, during the season this is a Vauxhall Vivaro short wheel based which is a bit irritating but it is what it is um, Okay, so starting from up here, I've got some shelves in here. So I've got six shelves. Sorry, no, I haven't. I've got five shelves. Um, top shelf up here. This is just stuff that I don't often need or use. So there's a foot pump in there, jump leads. There's a tow rope. There's just another just sort of rope over there. Just the stuff that I don't need particularly, but it's good to have. Also, that should be over here. In here is a puncher kit um, to or puncher plugs whatever you want to call them <clears throat> for tires not that i have a ride on mower but i have an access to a lot of ride on mowers i think i have access to four different ride on mowers and if they were to get a puncher it would kind of be my responsibility to get it sorted out there's a good chance the client wouldn't be there i could be in the middle of the lawn i can't just leave their mower out so i need to get it away so with the foot pump and the plug kit I should be able to do that. Worst case scenario, you know, you've got to go and get a new inner tube or whatever it may be. But if it's tubeless, then I've got the kit there. So that's just something I carry. In this shelf here, it's just kind of like wellies, waterproofs, waterproof trousers. Uh, the meter wheel kind of goes in there just for the moment, um, just because it's kind of where it lives. Um, quite often, stick some bags in there um, just to... Uh, you know, like uh, waste bags, kind of like stuff in there. Up here we have tools. So, um, always carry a little magnet because generally if something breaks in the middle of a lawn, if you're trying to take nuts and bolts out, uh, you're probably gonna lose them in the grass. So I always have a little magnetic tray. A uh, little socket set. This is my in the field socket set. This is from, uh, this is from Lidl, I think, and it's nearly 10 years old. Um, every bit's still there. You can see there's a little bit of rust on stuff, but it all works perfectly. Um, it's not great, but it's, it certainly does the job and gets you out of a bind. In here, these are generally just tools that, you know, when you buy a machine, a blower, and it comes with, you know, it comes with one of these. If I haven't got one of these in here, I'll chuck it in. Uh, that's obviously for a chainsaw. And then just some other stuff that if I've needed it, you know, to clean a spark plug off, if I've needed it, I tend to have kept it in here or got a particular tool to put in there. Um, just stuff really, don't know why they're in there actually. Uh, old 50p. <laughs> So uh, I live up here, then I have my fuel shelf. So everything I do is color coded. So all petrol lives in green cans. They will never be in anything else other than green cans. All two stroke is in red cans and will never be in anything else other than red cans. A couple of funnels that needs to go back into the container. Don't need that anymore. And then this shelf here is where the hand blower goes. So you notice this little section here, that it used to be with the old BG86 that the stand used to sit in here and that used to sort of lock it in place and stop it sliding around. I've moved that a little bit wider and you will see why.
So rather than the BG86, we now have the BGA86. And then what we have is four batteries sitting here. Like so. As I use one and replace it, I tend to just turn them around so that when I come to grab one, you know, obviously you can press the button and it lights up, but I can just grab, I, I, can, I can see clearly which ones have some juice and which ones don't. So that's that tray or that drawer, so that sits nicely there. That doesn't fall out. You'll then notice the blue hooks and maybe the spare strimmer cord is a giveaway as to what that's for. So the strimmer, and it can be long handled hedge cutter if necessary, sits up here. Uh, this is a battery one again, so that's why we've got the batteries here. In an ideal world, I'd have one more battery um, for, and this is just general maintenance. So this isn't blowing leaves and things like that. This is just for enough juice to sort of edge the lawns, get to the bits the mowers can't get to, and just kind of like blowing off any clippings off the patios, paths, etc. So what it also does is it keeps this completely out of the way means that it's not affecting the floor space or getting in the way of any mowers and uh, also I'll always carry a fan rake. You will notice this uh, this space here. Initially when I made did all the racking this was meant to be a bin um, which was really really useful but this is a Cooper Pegler little sprayer and I realized that that actually sits in perfectly doesn't go anywhere if you can pull it out and it's just more by luck than judgment but that is quite tight fit so that sits there perfectly this sits here now this is my total so everything in here is either a total weed killer or um, a hard surface moss killer um, so nothing ever goes in here the only only the stuff that kills all goes in here and therefore I will never make a mistake because um, all the bad stuff always goes in this one and this sits in here and doesn't take up any space so as you can see that's pretty flush down there not taking up any space then we've got this corner over here dustpan and brush always need a dustpan and brush just for cleaning out the van but you will always get bags of fertilizer that split so if you can you know use that research that fertilizer sweep it up put it back into a bag that's not split put it into the hopper and use it um, otherwise you can waste quite a lot also if it's some spill I know on a client's driveway not that that happens but if it did I'd have some form some way of um, sweeping it up clearing it up again that just sits up out the way so then we've got two drawers we've got two here up here is like my chemical kind of uh, I call it like my chemical cabinet if you want to call it that so here we have some gallop so um, glyphosate or Roundup as you may know it here um, Quailjex Pro so this is for the driveways hard surfaces uh, crossbar so that's my selective weed killer this here is another selective weed killer and this is literally you go around you see you know a random weed and you can just tss, tss, give it a spray here I've got some rubber gloves uh, I've got a pack of rubber gloves and yeah, this is the um, this is for the these two, so that should really be there. And somewhere, I, oh here it is. And this clearer one, this is for selective and fertilizer or seaweed or anything which isn't particularly. Uh, going to burn people's lawns. So that's uh, that's that shelf there. This is a demonstration. Basically you can get one knapsack in there, and then these are all a bit need to be rechecked, redone. Actually, they're pretty old and bent. But basically, this then sits up there, out of the way. And this green bungee just goes across just holds everything in place now you can get two in there so this is the one I use for iron and then the one I use for selective and um, 
fertilizers, etc., can go in alongside of it. So there's plenty of room in there. So that's great. Again, keeps it keeps it completely out of the way. The only thing I don't like with the Cooper Pegler ones is that the handle sticks right out. So that's a bit of a pain, whereas those ones lift up. And then I've just screwed a little pot in here, which has just got some nuts and bolts and just, just random, random stuff. Okay, one other thing to note before we get the mowers is you've got the two battens. You've got one there and then you've got one down here. There should be another one, but uh, I think it must have got damaged and I removed it and I haven't got around to replacing it. Okay, so mowers of choice. Um, people always ask me, why do you use the haters? Um, there's been a few reasons for why I've stuck to the, to the hater, hater mowers. Um, I did look to change, and you'll see why in a minute, why I couldn't change and I had to stay with the hater. Okay, so the 56 Pro just sits in perfectly like this. Now if you notice here where the pull bars are, I did try to use the, uh, the Honda in the guise of Cobra Pro, but they're so long it just wouldn't fit in. And I just couldn't shut the door. On to the second mower. Now this uh, used to be the Hater 41 Pro, um, but while I've got use of the Ego, I've been using this. Um, it just makes it a, things a little bit more flexible. To be honest, I don't really use this mower too much anymore. Um, now, as I say, the, the baton's gone. So what I do is I just take a bungee around the handle and just attach it up to the, the wood up here and that holds it in place. The great thing also about by using the Ego mower, um, as opposed to a sort of a, a normal mower, is if you need it to stand it upright, you can stand it upright. You can obviously bring the handle up as well. And that just makes it stop a hell of a lot smaller. And again with this bag here, <coughs> you can bring that bag in like that. So you can bring this in or you could stand that up. Just gives you a few more options. We've got the third mower and we've obviously got this space here behind the wheel or above the wheel axle for the Toro Time Master. So um, I carry a scaffold board, half board, just for the um, the uh, Pro to get up, the Hater Pro, um, and obviously the uh, the 41 if I've got the 41. Um, obviously this has got four wheels so it would need two boards, just takes up a bit too much room. So what all I do is just get this into this position here, bring it in, pop a wheelie, wheels on, bend the knees, lift it up, just walk behind it, flick over the top, it's actually a lot lighter than you can imagine, clip that into position there, and then pull it back towards the baton. I used to carry a baton at the front, but it got in the way quite a lot when I was doing other stuff and I was needing the van, like the full space of the van, because it had to be quite big to stop it bouncing over. One time I hit the brakes really hard and the mower shot over the top and uh, caused quite a bit of damage. Uh, snapped a few cables and stuff because this all got bent out of place. Um, so what I do now is just have a ratchet strap and just ratchet it across here, up against the baton. That goes nowhere your bag can either sit down the side or just sit on top. So there's plenty of room to the sides, either side, a lot of space in there, obviously you can move the bag over. So if you're getting into the autumn period and you need feel you need a backpack blower, then you've got plenty of room for that. If you're planning on spraying some weeds, there's plenty of room for some pre-mixed containers to take. Just cable tie, um, bungee cord those to whatever's nearest. So that is my setup. Obviously I've got the trailer as well. So if there was ever a need to, uh, to take a ride on or to take multiples, remember I've got two 56 Pros, I've got two Time Masters. So if I have somebody else out helping me, I can always take the trailer and take more mowers. Um, again, there's plenty of room should I need another strimmer or, uh, or something like that. So this is my mowing setup now. This has actually been, there's been a bit of thought which goes into this, okay? And 
the, uh, the theory and the thought behind this is access, speed. When you're doing a mowing week, you just wanna, you just wanna get to the lawn, get the mower you choose, get the piece of equipment you choose, and then just get on with it, get it back. Now, if I used the Honda mowers, they wouldn't fit in this side. So I would need to put them in. So I'd have two options. One is to push them in backwards, which is a bit of a ball ache. The other option is to push them right to the front. But then if I needed to get them out, you turn up at a property, you've then got to get everything which is behind it out, get the mower you want out, put everything else away, because you need to keep this stuff safe. Um, if it's not, you know, a gated garden or whatever else, put everything else away. Then you're going to come once you finish doing your lawn back to the mower, back to the van, get everything out, put your mower back in, put everything else back in. This way, I can stand here and I can access whatever it may be. You might think, right, there's weeds. I can just grab that. I haven't got to move anything. I can just grab it. I can just go. I need the time master. I just take the time master. I need either of those mowers, they go out the side door. So although this is quite a small van, everything in here is accessible. So it's, you know, compactly packed. Everything's out the way. Don't have to move anything to get to anything. So uh, that's the theory behind it. So yeah, so this is my setup. So as I say, today is the first day of um, regular weekly maintenance or mowing, should I say. I actually ticked off a few of them yesterday. Uh, just because I was doing the scarifying jobs as well, so they got their cut then, so they're fine. And the first job we're going to go to, which I will try and film, um, I'm not going to obviously film the whole week, but uh, the first one is a new client, and it's uh, one I've spoken about before, and I've done one mow there, that was just kind of like a, a winter tidy up, just to get the rest of the leaves and the twigs, um, and I'm going to use the Time Master. Originally I cut it with the 56 Pro, and uh, I'm now going to use the Time Master just to see how much more efficient I can be in that. So uh, I'll show you that one when I get there. Okay, so this is the back. A little bit of frost in the corner here. So we'll start out the front. And actually you can see my footprint, so it's, it's going pretty quickly. Um, very mossy. When I first came in did the quote, um, this hedge went all the way round all the way around you couldn't see any fence so um yeah this is the front sorry this is the back <clears throat> uh, gate is, yeah, the gate's locked i just have a set of keys now Interestingly, the prevailing wind comes towards the camera. So all those trees um, all fall on the island and then get blown onto this lawn here. Um, and apparently all the gardeners from all the other houses dump all their leaves on that island. So that's something I've had to think about in my quote. Okay, five minutes in and we've got our first casualty. Got this little fella here. So, there's not a great deal we can do for him. Other than just put him in the, the hedge, I suppose. <sighs> and leave him be. He's certainly better in the hedge than having a Time Master mow him over. Okay, so that's all the edging done. So this is the um, the KMA 30135R. 
So this has got a uh, two, AP200 battery and they're a little bit lighter so I prefer that. I think anything bigger gets a bit off balance. Um, and there's two thirds left. So that's enough. So I, I reckon that's about 10 minutes worth of use, maybe a little bit more. Now all we need to do is just sling that back up here out the way. Now, knowing what I knew about these trees, what I have done is I have brought the uh, backpack just to uh, to help with the leaves, get them out on the lawn, um, ready to be sucked up. Okay, so front lawn all striped up, um, all leaves collected. Now this is a classic example of why you need to pick your leaves up during winter, because this is what you're left with, bare muddy patches. Okay, and the back lawn all striped up. I mean, it's moss, I, I say it's mossy, it is mossy obviously, but uh, this client has had regular lawn maintenance up until the end of last year, or the start of this season. So uh, I would expect it to look better, um, but she's canceled them. And um, if she decides to go back to having lawn care, then I've got the gig, basically. There's a few things to be sorted out before they get to that point for reasons that have nothing to do with us. So that's, uh, that's that one done. Second cut ever on this lawn. That's the first job. Um, so now busy day, on to the next ones. I'm not gonna film them because I just haven't got time to keep stopping and putting the camera down. So we'll leave the video there. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, lawn care mower setup, fan setup, and uh, seeing this first job.